Hello and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to be showcasing you PHP Designer 8 and a few of its new f new features. PHP Designer 8 has come a long way since PHP Designer 7. It has mostly a lot of small but big updates. I'm going to showcase a few of them in this video and to begin I'm going to start off with HTML5 syntax highlighting. Before in PHP Designer 7, you were able to code in HTML5, but you didn't get the the luxury of being able to see the syntax on the fly. So now in PHP Designer 8, it has practically full support for HTML5 syntax and code completion. So let's start off. The first thing I want to show you is the audio tag. Before you were able to write audio tags, but you had to, you know, type the whole thing out. And for some people who do a lot of work, it's a lot easier just to have sweet code completion like that. So, to begin with the audio tag, we need the controls. And within the audio tag, you need a source file. And in this demonstration, I'm going to be using Firefox, which has OGG support. But I'm going to show you that you can implement two different sources and the browser will know which one to choose and run. So first, let's just start off with the mp3. And you gotta tell the browser what kind of audio file it is. So if I went ahead and saved this to my server and refreshed it, you're gonna notice this X here. That means the file can't be loaded because Firefox doesn't support mp3 right now. But luckily, I have an OGG form. You gotta specify the type and close it and it's uh, it's going to load when I come back it's gonna reload it's gonna show you that it's loading it and now the file's been loaded you can start playing it cool I'm gonna mute it because it's pretty loud you can see it's loading on the fly so you wanna skip halfway just go and let it buffer let it load you can pause it play it continue playing put the sound back on, etc. Very, very cool. You can check in the help file right here what has been added. These are all the new features in, H in uh, PHP Designer 8. So the next thing I want to show you is CSS3. I use CSS a lot and it's a lot helpful to now have the CSS3 functionality with the syntax highlighting. So regular CSS, whatever, change the background to black, change the color to white. Save it. No big deal. But now let's create a, a table class. Um, let's change the font in that to Arial. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and create the table down here. I don't know why I'm still using tables, but... Okay, and let's go ahead and add a few rows of data. So... One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Save that. It's just going to be a regular table, but it's got Arial font. But now let's say I want to alternate the background in each of these rows between red and blue. You were able to do this in previous versions of PHP Designer, but it wasn't really nice. It would underline it in red, it would say it doesn't exist, blah blah blah. But now it's got full support. So let's go ahead and use the nth child parameter on the table row. So for every odd child, that's a row in the table class, we'll change the background to red. So we go ahead and save that. And if you don't already notice, I'm using the FTP within the program where you edit a file, you save it, it automatically uploads back to your server. So I've made every odd row now have a red background. What about for the evens? Same thing. 
Just say even instead of odd. And let's make it blue. Okay, save it. Let it upload. Refresh. Cool. Awesome. But now say I wanted the first the first row in the table to not have any formatting. So if I go back here, it's going to start off with now it's red, blue, red, blue, red. That's not what I want. So you can use first child and just set the background to black. But now it's still telling you for every odd, make it red and every even. That's not going to change. It's going to change the background. But I want the first ones to start off as red. So it's just a matter of changing between even and odd. Go ahead and refresh. There you have it. That's, that's the way you want it to look. And you got this beautiful syntax, easily readable by anyone who's going to edit your code. Great. Awesome. All right, another thing that was added, which is, which is helpful, is the text highlighter. Say we're inside a PHP class. So I'm going to use this tic-tac-toe class I created a few weeks ago. And I want to see where board is ever called. So I, if I select the variable board, it's not going to be found because that's just that's the instance variable. But if I want to see this board, so every time this board is called, let's see, this board, okay. So it's called everywhere in here and down there. Cool. That is very helpful when trying to look through your code to see where any time this variable is called. Helpful. It doesn't necessarily have to be a variable. You can go into anything. And so let's go back to our test. Say I want to see any any time I s have a table row. So start and end of the table row. And even in the CSS, it's there. Cool. Very cool. Now the next thing I want to show you is the CSS minifier. So let's grab this style sheet that I made for that tic-tac-toe class. And if I save it to my server, you're going to see that it's 653 bytes. It's 49 lines long, but for say some sites that have a lot of traffic, it's best to minify anything you can whether it's the CSS or the HTML. So even if your code looks sloppy, it's best to have minimalized code when you have a high traffic website. So now if you go to the CSS tab up here and click Minifier, you can see how it will change your code. But there's two levels of compression. There's Normal, which puts every new tag on a new line or there's minimal which puts everything on one line. So if I use normal and saved it, let it go, now it's 484 bytes. So almost 200 bytes different. What if we went ahead and made it really minimal? One line. Save it. 466 bytes. It still has the same amount of data, it just got rid of each line. each new line that is. Pretty simple, very neat, and it saves you a lot of time in the long run. Very cool. The next and last thing I want to show you is the to-do manager. This is really helpful when you have projects and multiple people working on the project. So say we had to finish this this test thing here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything that I've added before. So the first thing that needs to be done is we need to finish that style sheet. So finish CSS. It's not too important, so let's just change it to medium priority. Okay? And start it today. And let's say it has to be finished by tomorrow. Change the status of it from not started to completed to in progress to defer. Right now it's in progress. 
and you can change the percentage it's done. Let's say it's at 70. It will update right in the fly. So now let's say we need to finish the, the HTML. So we just go ahead and type in finish HTML. It's a, it's a medium to high priority, so we'll give it a 4. And just change the date. And let's say it has to be done by Monday. It's in progress, so let's go ahead and change it to in progress. And let's change to the percentage to 50 or so. Now let's say we have one more thing. So finish tic-tac-toe class. This is high priority, so let's just make it 6. And let's change that to today. And it has to be finished by next Friday. Oh, maybe it's already completed. When the progress meter is set to 100, it's going to cross it out. But it's also important to update yourself to say it's completed. And the cool thing about this is you can export to a CSV or an HTML file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and open it. Today, okay. And you can see, this is pretty helpful sharing with other team members what needs to be done, when it needs to be done, how far it's already done, etc. Awesome. Very, very easy to use. Very manageable over multiple projects, multiple team members. It's a great resource. And that is just a glimpse of PHP Designer 8. To find out more about PHP Designer 8, you can go to mpsoftware.dk. You can get a free 21-day trial. Or you can simply buy it. It's a great program, a great resource. It has many, many different features and functions. And it's probably the best IDE that I've ever used. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you want to see any more PHP or web development tutorials, feel free to to, describe, to subscribe. Um, if not, go ahead and rate it, post a comment, whatever. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.